All right, you can go in your Bible to Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to show you an interesting thing here. I had some brethren in the comments write, and they say you really shouldn't be calling it easy believism. It should be called free grace or, you know, whatever kind of a thing. These people that just say it's belief, there's no changed life, there's no repentance of sin, there's no, uh, you know, whatever. They, they come up with all this stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, um, we've been saying easy believism for so long, it's kind of hard to get away from that. But, you know, technically you're right. So I'll try to say, you know, the free grace people or whatever, the no repentance crowd, whatever you want to call them. But uh, I'm going to show you today that Jesus Christ denies the belief-only professing Christians. Okay? Because they'll say it's only belief. If somebody says that they believe in Jesus, that's all it is for salvation. Only belief. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their profession. It doesn't say that. It says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Hmm. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Um, Jesus didn't say, Hey, belief only. Okay, somebody says, all it takes, don't even look at their fruits, don't even look at what they're doing with their life, if there's evil stuff coming out of them and whatever else, don't look at any of that. All it takes is, if that person says, I believe Jesus died for my sins, they're saved. They can live however they want, they can be a gay Christian, they can be, you know, just transvestite or whatever, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. They can be a cussing, drunken you know, fornicating, just whatever. If they say that they believe in Jesus, that's all that matters. That's not what Jesus said. You're to know them by their fruits. All right? Very important. You say, well, but that's that's the Sermon on the Mount. You know, okay, hyper-dispensationalist. That's the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, well, the, Paul said if, uh, in First Timothy chapter 6, if any man consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words. Then he goes on to rebuke really harshly these people. We are to consent to the words of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you that what Jesus said there about inspecting the fruit, not the profession, I'm going to show you it lines up with what Paul wrote. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And of course, you know, the liars will come out and they'll say, well, Brian is denying that, that belief in Jesus saves you. Uh, I didn't say that. I've never said that, nor will I ever say that. I'm saying when people say belief only. Okay? Faith alone. The Bible never says faith alone. Grace through faith. Okay? God's grace, our faith. Believing in Jesus Christ, yes, will save you. But why are you believing in Him? Because you're a sinner? Or because you just want to go to heaven when you die and continue living in sin down here on this earth without any conviction? You see? That's the issue here. Uh, no Bible-believing Christian um, will deny that belief in Jesus Christ, belief in His death, burial, and resurrection, that's going to save you. The question comes up, why are you believing it, and what are you going to do about it after you get saved? All right? What are you going to do about this thing of, of why did you believe in Jesus? What did, why did He save you? What are you going to do now that He saves you? You see, that's what I'm trying to say. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 11 now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Fruits of your righteousness? No, no, that's not there. There are no fruits. You're not supposed to be a fruit inspector. You know, that's not supposed to be there. You just, you just, somebody says that they're saved. They can be the most wicked, vile person out there, just, you know, vexing even to be around them. As long as they profess that they're saved, then they're saved. Right? Uh, no. Jesus said, no, it's by their fruits ye shall know them. Paul's saying there about supporting ministries that are good. Multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Not self-righteousness of saying, I don't need Jesus Christ. 
All right? Your righteousness comes from Jesus Christ. You're supposed to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You're supposed to reflect his righteousness in a sinful, fallen world. We are lights in a dark world. That's supposed to be there. Verse 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through, through us thanksgiving to God. Yeah. Fruit of righteousness is going to lead you to being thankful to God. It's not some kind of a negative thing when the Lord tells you to give up certain sins in your life. It says you need to quit that, and you need to quit that, and you need to quit that. Well, I have belief enough. You know, my, my belief is enough. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe the gospel. Therefore, there's no repentance of sin. There's no works meet for repentance. I don't have to live a changed life. And it, No. You're going to look and you're going to say, Thank you, Lord, so much for helping me to get victory over that sin and victory over that sin. And, and, and thank you, Lord, for showing me the truth of your word. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity to witness to, to someone. Thank you, Lord, for the persecution that, that has come. You know, this month we, we celebrate here in America the, the holiday called Thanksgiving. And a lot of Christians just don't really do that very much. And it isn't about gluttony. It's not a gluttony day of just see how much turkey I can fit in my stomach or something. That's not what it's supposed to be. I did a message many years ago, an audio sermon, back with Bible Believers Fellowship when I was preaching and things there. And that audio message was about the sacrifice of Thanksgiving. It's supposed to be a sacrifice. And originally, Thanksgiving in America was a time of fasting and giving thanks to God so that God could prosper the nation. Boy, that's changed, hasn't it? Now you have Christmas, it just overlaps Thanksgiving. They go, you know, Halloween, you get all these bloody, demonic-looking costumes in the, in the store, and then just, that gets done, and bam, they put that stuff up for sale really quick, you know, 50% off or something like that, and then just Christmas decorations. I mean, I was going to stores here in the local area. They had Halloween and Christmas trees up at the same time. It's all marketing. You know, it's incredible. There are a lot of things about Christmas that I am against. Okay? But uh, let's continue here. First Philippians, first Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Somebody's probably going to take that and make it into a video now. They're going to say... Dudlinger's added to Scripture. He added to Scripture. He said First Philippians. <laughs> oh, boy. Things people will do. Yes, First Philippians. Okay, there is no Second Philippians. So let's turn to First Philippians, brethren. First Philippians, chapter 1, <laughs> verses 9 through 11. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Every tree is known by its fruit, Jesus says. Well, that was the Sermon on the Mount. Let's just ignore it. Uh, no, you compare Scripture with Scripture. And right there, Paul says, the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. Are you in Christ today? Are you a member of His body? Well, yes, but He doesn't convict me over sin in my life. Well, yes, but He doesn't tell me to quit doing certain things. That's a problem. Well, how dare you? You're judging my salvation. I believe in Jesus. Okay, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a professing Christian. Um, yeah, uh, so were false brethren that gave Paul a problem. Your profession means nothing. I can walk out, I can take you out into the woods and say, see that tree over there? You say, it's an oak tree. I say, no, it isn't. That's a cherry tree. See? No, it, it, no it's, it's an oak tree. No, it isn't. It's a black cherry tree. Black cherries, beautiful, just ripe black cherries, you know, not that big, you know, that big, little black cherries on there, boy, they, they make really good jelly, and just eat them raw and things, and, and things, and you say, I don't see any fruit on that tree, yeah, but I'm telling you, it's a black cherry tree, come on, then you say, well, let's walk over here, and you look, and you say, let's look at the uh, tree, no, don't look at the tree, don't look into the characteristics of the tree, okay, don't look for fruit on the tree, just believe me, because I told you it was a black cherry tree, you say, it's oak tree, how dare you? You're judging the tree. 
It's called common sense. Somebody comes out and they say, I'm a Christian. The Pope, the head of Christendom. Well, I guess we should believe it. If the Pope or some other Catholic priest comes out and says, or bishop or cardinal or any of the other devil worshipers in the system, they come out and they say, I'm a Christian. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he died on the cross. You say, praise the Lord, Cardinal so-and-so is a Christian. He's saved. He's on his way to heaven. We have a brother in the Vatican. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. Amen. We got a brother of the... Or you can say, wait a second here. Maybe we need to look at some fruit from these monsters. If this guy's a Christian, then what on earth is he doing being part of an organization that rapes children? Oh, Brother Brian, you're so judgmental. Yes, I am. I have common sense. You see, I'm going to judge fruit. And I see people putting out videos on YouTube and videos calling themselves Christians. And I hear profanity coming out of their mouths. And I'm going, wait a second here. That's one of the first things that will go when you get saved. When the Holy Spirit of God moves in, you will be vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Don't tell me you won't. And I see people, I'm a Christian, but the King James Bible, to say it's God's inspired word, is wrong. This isn't God's perfect word. There is no such thing as a perfect Bible. Uh, sorry, your fruit is rotten. You produce evil fruit. I'm a Christian, but uh, on and on and on, whatever you want to make it into. You can profess to be a Christian all day long. I can profess that a tree, an oak tree, is a black cherry tree till I'm blue in the face and I'll never convince somebody with common sense until I can show fruit on that tree. I've said it before, you know, story from my childhood. The very first tree I ever got to know the name of was a prunus avium. Give you a little bit of Latin there, the uh, botanical name for it. Bird cherry. It was a cherry tree. And you know how I got to know that tree? By the leaves. Okay. No, was, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was the bark of the tree. The root structure? Uh, no, it was by the fruit that that tree produced. Before I even understood really much about trees, I knew as a little boy, that tree right over there along the edge of my parents' property the, where I grew up down in, you know, I showed some of the video there in my uh, 4,000 mile road trip thing. Right along the field, the, the tree line going back through, there was a big cherry tree there. And I got to know where that tree was because it produced fruit. What is the fruit of the ministries that you watch here on YouTube? What kind of fruit are they producing? You say, well, I like to watch uh, Steven Anderson and his faithful cult followers and things like this and whatever else because they go out and they're winning thousands. They win thousands of people to the Lord in their soul winning efforts. Just going out and just... Just pounding the pavement, brother. They're out there door to door. They're preaching the gospel. They're getting thousands of people saved. Okay, where's the fruit? Where's the fruit? Three thousand people got saved on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter two turned the world upside down. You want me to tell me that a bunch of Baptist little Hiles spinoffs? They're going out and they're getting thousands, tens of thousands of people saved here in America. Where's the fruit? It's not there. But Brother Brian, they made professions of faith. I could care less about their professions of faith. doesn't mean anything. Well, I watch so-and-so, and he sure does correct you, Brian. He sure got a lot of good videos exposing you. What's his fruit? What kind of fruit is being produced from his ministry? Is he going out and preaching the gospel that he claims to believe in to the lost? Of course not. All these people do is just, just stalk this ministry. That's all they do. Disgusting. Finally, let's end up in one other place. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Why are they unbelieving? Read over in John chapter 3. Okay? And you'll see that people do not believe because they love darkness. Mm -hmm. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God 
and profession. But in works, they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. Yeah. You can profess all you want to be a Christian, but when it comes down to it, when the rubber meets the road, so to speak, what are the fruits? I can come out and I can say, I got this car and it has uh, 650 horsepower. Okay, but when the uh, rubber meets the road, the tires are on the pavement, I need to prove that that thing has 650 horsepower. Actually, it's a little four-cylinder, but I believe that it has 650 horsepower. You know, not turbocharged or anything else. I'm talking to motorheads right now. You can make this analogy with anything. Hey, you have the Holy Spirit of God move into your life. Where are the changes that it produced? Let me just go over here and plug my finger into the socket over here and just say, yeah, my finger's plugged into this electric socket over here on the wall. I don't feel a thing. Nothing changed. <laughs> I don't think so. You can have the Holy Spirit of God move into your life and just nothing happens. Nope, sorry. Jesus Christ gave us a very, very simple test to tell if somebody's genuinely saved or not. What are the fruits? Are we seeing evil things coming out of that person? Watch out for these people that come out with this belief only thing. You got to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. Don't get me wrong. Don't listen to liars that come out and say Brian Denlinger is denying that uh, you have to believe in Jesus to be saved. I don't teach that. But what I'm telling you is you get somebody that comes out and says, I believe in Jesus. They make a profession. That doesn't cut it. You have to examine their work. You have to examine what are they doing with their life. Works meet for repentance. It's there. And you say, well, that's good works. It's you're teaching works salvation. No, if I was teaching works salvation, I would be excluding Jesus Christ from the process. Just like the Roman Catholics do. You can't say, well, I put my faith in Jesus Christ and I don't need the seven sacraments. I don't need to be members of the Catholic Church. I don't need the auricular confession. I don't need... No, no, no. You have to have all that other stuff. Jesus Christ is removed from the equation. You know, unless you're eating Him and, you know, the Mass and things. But uh, that's work salvation. Saying Jesus Christ changed my life, that's not works. Good night, man. So, uh, can we judge people's salvation? Um, if you believe the King James Bible, yeah, absolutely. You can judge their fruit. You can look and say what kind of fruit is produced. That is going to be it. Please be careful who you listen to.